In this video, we're going to talk about how a pulse oximeter works. Pulse oximeter. So a pulse oximeter is one of our standard five ASA monitors, and it allows us to monitor the oxygen saturation in the operating room or any setting for that matter. So it works on the principle of the Beer-Lambert law of absorption, which you saw in the capnography video on detecting end tidal CO2. So that law basically states, if I emitted a certain wavelength of light through a substance, let's call it X, some of that light will get absorbed by this substance and some of it will transmit through. But the proportion, if I increased our concentration of substance X, that means more of my light will be absorbed, less will get through. So the amount of light that is absorbed by substance X is directly proportional to the concentration of this substance. So you can detect the concentration based on how much light is absorbed. And we have even a little graph here of absorbance over concentration. And the, the more concentration of substance X you add, the higher the absorbance. So you can detect at this level of absorption, then you have a specific concentration. So our pulse ox is basically the same thing. So it detects the amount of oxyhemoglobin. So hemoglobin attached to uh, oxygen. And it compares it with our deoxyhemoglobin, our amount of hemoglobin that is unbound to oxygen. And it shoots light through both of these substances at differing wavelengths. And based on the absorbance of light, it can spit out a concentration and therefore an oxygen saturation. That ratio will give us an oxygen saturation. So which wavelengths of light absorb which substance? So infrared light, infrared light, which is at a wavelength of 940 nanometers, absorbs, absorbs oxyhemoglobin, but does not absorb, or absorbs very little, deoxyhemoglobin. So if I shot two wavelengths of infrared light and I measured how much comes out, if I shot a wavelength of light through oxyhemoglobin, none would come out to the other end. I wouldn't see the other end because it would get absorbed. But if I shot infrared light through deoxyhemoglobin, then I would see that light come to the return plate or the sensor. So if I have more oxyhemoglobin, then, and if I have less deoxyhemoglobin, then I'm going to get less infrared light sensed, which means more absorbed, which means higher concentration of oxyhemoglobin and a higher pulse ox reading. So we have that for oxyhemoglobin. Red light, red light at a wavelength of 660 nanometers is going to, is going to not absorb our oxyhemoglobin, whoops, I'm just trying to make the colors work out so it becomes pretty intuitive. Let's do this one more time here. So we'll draw a gray base plate or sensor. So red light is going to shoot through oxyhemoglobin, but oxyhemoglobin is not going to absorb it. So what you'll see is you'll see light being transmitted through oxyhemoglobin, red light. But with deoxyhemoglobin, if you shot red light through deoxyhemoglobin, you will not see 
uh, you will not see that light transmitted to the other end. So deoxyhemoglobin absorbs red light. So if we know deoxyhemoglobin absorbs red light and oxyhemoglobin absorbs infrared light, we can basically make this chart or chart based on the wavelengths to determine our concentration of each of these substances and eventually spitting and oxygen saturation. So if we were to draw what an actual pulse ox looks like, so we have our finger right here and we have our pulse ox device and our pulse ox device is going to have two light emitting sources. One infrared light and one red light. And like we wrote or like we drew right over here, our finger has oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin. And based on the amount and concentrations of each, that is going to absorb or transmit or transmit this, this light to the other end, which contains a sensor. Oops which contains a sensor. So if we were to chart the uh, absorbance based on the wavelength of light, if we made a chart of that, it would look like this. So we have absorbance at one end and wavelength, if you remember lam lambda is wavelength of light from the other end. And if we drew this infrared wavelength at 940 nanometers and our red light at 660 nanometers, we would find out that if we were to chart what oxyhemoglobin's absorbance looks like, it would be high at the infrared, high absorbance, and it would be lower at the red. So this is what our oxyhemoglobin wavelength pattern looks like related to the absorbance. If we were to chart deoxyhemoglobin, the absorbance would be high at the red light because it would absorb red light and low at the infrared light. So this is what our deoxy hemoglobin would look like based on the absorbance. So if we have this measurement, if we took the average absorbance pattern, which is in between these two curves, so we took the average absorbance pattern, and if we, if we took the values of absorbance, so this is our absorbance at the red light. This is our absorbance at the infrared. And if we put them side by side and compared the ratios, we would be able to get the concentrations of oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin and therefore get an O2 set. And that is pretty much how a pulse ox works. Hopefully you have less deoxyhemoglobin than oxyhemoglobin. So hopefully this absorbance at our deoxy is much lower. If it's much lower then our average absorbance pattern is will show a higher oxygen saturation compared to a higher deoxyhemoglobin. Likewise, hopefully our oxyhemoglobin absorbance is high at the infrared light or infrared part of the spectrum. If it is low, then that means we don't have a, a lot of oxygen bound to hemoglobin and our O2 sat, our average absorbance pattern is gonna be is gonna be lower here, and our O2 sat is gonna be lower. So that is essentially how a pulse ox works. Now, one last thing to add, I know I wanna keep it uh, brief, and I haven't really done so in this video, but one thing to add is the pulse ox has a way of knowing which is, it has a way of knowing and sensing arterial pulsatile blood. And it does so by detecting 
the fluctuations in absorbance and measuring these fluctuations in absorbance over time to measure that this is the oxygen saturation of arterial blood. If it didn't parse out arterial versus venous blood, our oxygen saturation would be much lower and less accurate because the pulse ox would gather all that deoxyhemoglobin from our venous blood in our O2 sat equation, which is not what we want. So the pulse ox, this first part of the oximeter, this is how an oximeter works. And then the pulse oximeter means it can detect the pulsatility. It can detect our arterial blood. And from that, it spits out the absorbance and oxygen saturation of our arterial blood. That's how it knows.